Hi. Uh, so we are here today to present you the Cycle OSM project, uh, which aims at providing a bicycle-oriented render uh, for each and every cyclist, no matter the kind of practice. Uh, whether it's mountain biking in the in the city or whether you are like sports guy, um, so I'm Luca Vernet, uh, known as Fix on uh, OSM and online, um, and uh, I'm working on this with uh, Florimont. Uh, Hello, yes, thank you. Uh, yes, so I'm Florimont, uh, we are both Parisian and uh, we're both cyclists in, uh, in everyday life. Uh, we do also tourism on, with bicycles and, um, and sport. And um, I'm contributing to Open Super since I, I cycle in Paris, so since uh, two years only. First of all, uh, why do we need a bicycle map and why is it different than regular map? So most maps, uh, let's look at this business map on the left, uh, are made with motor vehicles in mind. So they show the main roads and they're designed with uh, like a, a real car approach. Uh, whether a cyclist actually wants a safe and comfortable way and is mostly okay for a small detour uh, in order to safer or more comfortable um, routes. We need it in different situations, be it uh, for everyday life in the city, or for sports, or uh, outside of the city for touring or yeah, mountain bike. Um, so we are aware of uh, a few um, a few existing render. So the most known one is probably Open Cycle Map, which is featured on osm.org. Uh, there are also local approaches uh, we are aware of, which were run by associations, but only on a local uh, scale. Um, and this is in, an interesting subject because OpenStreetMap is um, a reference data source for bicycle. Uh, so especially we are coming from Paris and there, are, there is a lot of activity, be it from collectivities or associations to complete the map. Uh, so it's in our place. It's probably one of the of the well reference data source. Um, so why would we need another one? Um, so first of all, uh, some of the previous approaches uh, have a local scale, so they are built in with a lot of implicit knowledge on the situation, on the specific city they are, they are in, or the specific area, and for a specific kind of uh, cyclist as well, uh, for instance, urban uh, commuters. Um, they also rely on technologies, which is like uh, overpass queries and leaflet layers and so on. So it's not uh, widely usable on any kind of, uh, of device. And so the only one uh, we know which is fitted for the full planet and fulfills the requirements of having tiles and being reusable and so on is Open Cycle Map. Um, sadly, it's, it's not a free software, so contribution is uh, difficult. And there are some known issues and like really contributes because it's, it's not free software. Um, so for instance, the shared bus lanes and the counter flow lanes, uh, which are very common in some, uh, some places, are not rendered. Um, and also it targets the general public um, with an easy to read key, but uh, the key can be quite confusing for newcomers. Uh, for instance, tracks are shown as dotted um, uh, instead of solid. Um, yeah, so we we aim at having a, a render for each and every cyclist in any situation, uh, be it in urban area where we will focus on uh, the main POIs and the infrastructure interesting for commuting or going to sh do shopping and seeing friends and whatever. Uh, in rural area, we target as well like tourism. So we have the cycle routes and all the emergency points of interest and the tourism points of interest. And it's also, well, we envision it as a tool as well for the mappers and the associations to have an overview of the cycle infrastructure um, well, with new, new elements rendered to help uh, map the, the cycle infrastructure. So here are a few snapshots. So this is a urban area in Paris. This is how it renders. Um, and this is an example in a rural area uh, in France. 
um, but we will detail it now. So one of the biggest challenge we had to to do that map uh, is to is that we have many features that we wanted to render on that map, and um, here's a list of the um, features and data we use of in the OpenStreetMap. And um, so first is of course the type and the importance of different highway uh, we we have. Uh, the cycle infrastructure, which is uh, the track, the lane, and the shared bus lanes. Um, whether it is one way or not on the road, and uh, whether it is one way for recycle or not. The surface quality of the road, um, because we um, uh, decided there is um, um, actually when you ro ride a bike, uh, a road bike, you don't want to go on a on a very on a, on a gravel track, for instance. So we use a track type, the surface, and smoothness tags for that. Um, we wanted to show how many traffic there is on uh, different on, the, on on different roads. Uh, so for that, we had not much data. So we use a road hierarchy and uh, the speed limits. Uh, for declivity and relief, we use uh, SRTM data that came from um, a NESA, a NESA nation, a mission. Sorry. Um, for the type of traffic allowed, uh, we use a diff the, the highway tag with pedestrian and um, living streets, of course, and also we use the access um, tag. And the last things to render was the cycling routes. So um, now, yes, next. Come on, okay. So uh, the first thing we use for um, for the render is to use uh, the color. So we decided that the blue means uh, bike. It's uh, bike friendly. So for instance, a uh, cycle way we render in a full blue. As you can see, um, end of no. Ah, thank you. <laughs> yes, okay. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, it's going to be difficult. So, there is a second right here just uh, across the, the screen, as you can see. Um, and, and the green is for pedestrian. Uh, so there is a footway in the, um, in the park in the top left corner of the image. Lots of footways that are rendered in green. And uh, when you have mixed traffic between uh, bicycle and pedestrian, we render that in a cyan colors. As you maybe you can see some paths in the wood and the lower part of the image. Next. Uh, we use also the colors for the, um, the traffic, the quantity of the traffic, because uh, we can say that a road with, with, uh, um, with, uh, with not much of traffic is bicycle friendly and pedestrian friendly. So uh, we decided that for car, for um, when a road has a max speed of 30 kilometers, we render it in light blue. Uh, when it is 20 kilometers, like in a living street in France, we render them in uh, light blue, green, cyan color. And uh, when it is uh, for like a, a walk speed uh, under 10 kilometers, we render them in uh, more green, cyan colors. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, there is uh, for the access of a road. When a road is of uh, the tag motor vehicle, a e girl, no, uh, it means there is no vehicle in, in it. So it's very bicycle and very pedestrian friendly. So we render them in, uh, in that uh, green uh, cyan color. And um, we render also the barriers with uh, small icons, as you can see on the right image. Um, another big important uh, feature of the map is uh, the quality. The quality of the cycleway and the quality of the surface. Um, we decided to use th three kinds of line. A solid line when the, there is the best quality, and dashed line was when the quality uh, goes down. Uh, so solid line means uh, a good cycleway. 
uh, a cycle track, sorry. Uh, normal dash line is a cycle lane, as you can see uh, on the, it's <laughs> difficult. Yeah, thank you, yeah. And uh, when um, the dash line is spaced, that is a bus lane. So on the other side of the road, yeah, yeah. And uh, we do the same thing for surfaces. Um, so when the road is uh, in a good surface, so like asphalt, we do just use a solid color, as you um, see. And um, but when the road has uh, a bad surface, but not as bad, we actually we split the quality of surface in three kind of surface. Surface that's okay for a road bike, like asphalt. Surface that's okay for trekking or gravel bike, like uh, fine gravel. And surface that's uh, okay for mountain bike, like uh, a ground. And there is an example here of um, uh, just a dash line, a medium surface in the, in the street. Yes, just there. We draw the street with a uh, few dashed. Okay. Um, so type in the process of highway. Um, the first thing we do is that uh, motorway are not drawn. Uh, they are drawn, but not uh, highlighted. They're just drawn in gray. Um, main roads are drawn, of course, but not. They are not very bigger than uh, tertiary road or classified road, for instance. And uh, of course, we draw the living street and the pedestrian, pedestrian street with little wider borders. Uh, next. Uh, direction of traffic is uh, made with simple errors. Gray arrow for vehicles, blue arrows for bicycle, for counter flow bicycle. And we draw also the one way direction on the cycle track with white arrow. And the last thing we we do for uh, so yeah so the routing the routes for basic bicycle um, that was a little challenge also because uh, we wanted to there's four level of uh, routes so local regional national international routes and um, we wanted to do them all and it was difficult to find good colors that mix well when you stack them. And it was also difficult to stack them and to be able to still sew the infrastructure under them. And yes, yeah, the last thing is a relief. Uh, for that, we do two things, uh, shading. Uh, shading is very useful, uh, with really uh, user-friendly because our brain are made to understand the relief just with a shade. And if you want to be precise, you can you have the counter. Hello? Yeah. We, we, we have the counter lines, and you can count the counter lines to, to understand the elevations. Um, yeah, we have time. So uh, here is an example. Uh, to show you the, the power of cyclo-SM. Uh, that is a wood in the west of Paris. And uh, let's say that uh, you live in the south, in uh, Boulogne, and you walk in the north, in the Yeah. And um, you do that uh, you do that commuting with uh, your bicycle, of course. And um, you, you like to avoid that main road in the middle of the wood because, of course, there are a lot of traffic in, uh, on it. And um, so, as you can see, there's many roads into that wood, uh, but you don't know which roads are open or closed for traffic. You don't know the surface of that road. So you cannot decide if it is better to go or to take a road on the east or to take a road on the west or mid maybe the road in the middle. But if you switch to Cyclo SM, you can decide. You can decide because you see that um, there are many roads in that wood that are close to traffic. That's the one in the cyan color. And um, for instance, if you wanted to go the middle road, 
yeah, that one. You can see, it's not very clear on that uh, projector, <laughs> but you can see uh, there is, it is dashed, there is, it is mm, rounded with a dashed line, so it means that uh, the ground, uh, the surface is uh, maybe gravel. Uh, but the road on the west is, uh, is uh, has a good surface that you can take up to the north. Yeah, that way. Okay, so we render also um, quite new, new elements that, to our knowledge, are not rendered uh, yet in other styles. Uh, with the idea, well, it's kind of a joke, the render to tag. So the idea that uh, these elements might already be added in OSM uh, database, but then they are like uh, often not maintained because they are not rendered, so people don't see them. So you have to go to the editor and like uh, check for them explicitly in order to see them, and well, you have to be aware of them. So to render them and well, try to, to improve their usage. Uh, so we render bicycle boxes. We render tra traffic calming infrastructure as well. Uh, we make the distinction between a bicycle parking and a secured one, uh, which is supervised. Um, and for the elevators and the, stair the stairs, uh, we take into account bicycle friendly um, uh, tags to, to render them either in uh, gray or blue depending if they are bicycle friendly or not. And our next goal is to render the give a traffic light sign, which is a uh, French uh, regulation uh, that bike can pass at the red light um, with a give way restriction. And well, this is represented by a quite complicated scheme with a relation, and often it's, it's not added or, or it's uh, incomplete in French data. So we would like to render it uh, first for cyclists to see it, and then also for users to add it uh, in a visual way. Uh, so for the next steps, uh, this is well still to be considered a beta. This is the first uh, beta version, let's say. Uh, so in the upcoming months, we plan to do quite a lot of adjustments on open tickets. So all of this is uh, on our GitHub repo. Um, we also plan to work on the rendering, uh, on the performance of the style. Uh, so far it's working, but this can be like greatly improved. And uh, we also need quite a a few contributions on design, uh, be it icons or style or like uh, colors, palette. Uh, so yeah, we are uh, taking contributions on this. Um, in the well, very soon we plan to have uh, the relief for the full planet. Uh, so far, the version online we show afterwards is, it does not have this data. Um, we also plan to work on the key of the map and to ease the contributing workflow, we'd like to, to have this idea of uh, generating the, the key automatically from a, a tiny fake OSM uh, world uh, to, to be sure that the, the key displayed is always in sync with uh, render code. Um, and we plan also to try to have a light version without, uh, well, with reduced number of POIs and without cycle routes. And this one would be usable as a base map uh, for custom maps or for print. Uh, so our big announcement today is that we have, uh, so our style is available uh, worldwide and it's uh, live updated. So this is done thanks to, to servers uh, provided by the French local chapter. So many thanks to them. Um, so this is available at uh, www.cycleosm.org. Um, the style is available at uh, GitHub. So all the code is uh, open source and well, free software available at, at GitHub if you want to have a look and contribute. Um, we also propose to have a breakout session tomorrow at 10.30 uh, in uh, Room Mathematic on B to talk about uh, bicycle in uh, OSM and uh, about the ecosystem around bicycle in uh, OpenStreetMap uh, with tools on, well, from a tools and tagging perspective. Um, and here are our, our, our contacts if you want to, to get in touch about this. And so thanks for your attention and we welcome questions.
So does anyone have question? So uh, which technique are you using behind? Is it, uh, is it Cartro and uh, OSM to PGSQL or something else? Uh, you mean for the, the style, for coding the style? So, well, um, yeah. this is, so currently this is, uh, well, living on, uh, on uh, OSMFR uh, servers. So there is uh, one regular import uh, into a PostgreSQL database. And then we use Carto CSS style uh, to, well, it's, it's just Carto CSS, just the same as the OSM.org um, style, uh, so the standard one. And so it's the same technique. Okay, so this is a drop-in replacement for standard Carto style, right? Uh, so it works exactly the same as uh, OSM.org, yeah, but it's not meant to replace it because OSM.org is like way larger than just cycling. Another question? Thank you. Um, firstly, have you actually obtained the trademark for the use of the OSM, or have you obtained permission to use OSM within the domain name? Because I believe that's not normally permitted. Um, my main question was, um, it seems to me that what you've created is a map of cycling infrastructure, and that's not necessarily what a cyclist always uses. Um, I'm looking at my hometown of Cambridge, for example, and some of the sort of key routes that, that you have as a sort of cyclist in terms of how you're, you're sort of navigating through the city, you don't really get that sense coming out because there's lots of cycle infrastructure which is, is sort of very heavily shown, but, but some of the, the very heavily used routes that don't have cycle infrastructure, which do get used more, are, are less um, shown. So I wonder, what, what was your sort of thing thinking in terms of the compromise there between the sort of um, navigate, the, the sort of if like visualization of a city versus the actual infrastructure that exists. Um, are you talking about the problem that um, a, a good road for cycling is a road without cars, mostly? Are you talking about that or? Not necessarily. I mean, I think there's, there's many parts of the world, for example, like where I live in Cambridge, where um, you, have, you have routes that, that really have no cycle infrastructure at all, but are still mm -hmm. very heavily used. Um, and, and infrastructure really isn't very well joined up. And I think that's a very different thing to the likes of, say, Amsterdam, um, maybe Paris to more extent, where you, know, you do actually have long stretches of a properly connected network. In places like Cambridge or, or many parts of the UK, um, infrastructure is, is very spotty. And, and so okay. what, you, what you see is a map that sort of shows that's infrastructure, but doesn't really give you a sense of actually the, the sort of, if you like, the layout of the city, which is actually more how a cyclist tends to, to sort of navigate in the UK. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's a bit complicated, but <laughs> I, I'm okay. a routing specialist. So. Uh, but yeah, but the problem, we, we cannot wonder something that doesn't exist. <laughs> that uh, we cannot wonder a cycling network where there is no cycling network. The only thing we, I wanted to, to have is that um, to, we, I, I would love to have the traffic of roads and to render them on the map because uh, like I said um, a good road for cycling is a road without traffic so but we don't have that data in OpenStreetMap so we only take the max speed which is a, it's a bad bad replacement because in, in Paris we can have lot of uh, there is a lot of streets with only 30 kilometers max speed but there are a lot of traffic in them. It's not pleasant at all to to go to to, to go cycle them. Um, so yeah, I think uh, there's no simple solution to to your problem. <laughs> um, yeah, we have time for our last question.
Thank you very much for your talk. Is it possible already for end users to click together their own GPS track for cycling on, on the basis of your map? Because that would be really interesting for when I want to go road cycling and I have, I don't know, the race bike with me and I want to avoid gravel or anything. Uh, so we are aiming at providing a, a map. So if you go to cycleosm.org, you have the map, you have the view of the map. Uh, then we are not looking particularly into building an ecosystem with applications so on, so on with it. But uh, the tiles are well uh, subject to fair use policy, but uh, reusable. So you can just use the tiles you, in uh, whatever application you are using. So for instance, if you are using Osmond on your Android device, you can tell him to load the tiles online, and you will have uh, like all the power of Osmond plus uh, the the tiles uh, from Cycle OSM. If you are using uh, B Router, for instance, uh, you can also customize the tiles and load custom tiles. Uh, so yeah, you can. It's it's just about the map. It's not about uh, like the ecosystem. Thanks a lot, guys.